show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to this quick discussion video. Now, you may have seen on my Twitter account and on my Facebook page yesterday that I posted a picture and a quick comment as well regarding Metal Gear Survive. Now I've recently purchased this game and that is largely because I was more curious than anything else about it and had seen a few people doing some gameplay of it. Initially this was on Susie Lou's game channel, saw a couple of her episodes of it and then after that I sort of looked a bit more into it um, beyond just the trailer that Konami showed quite a while back um, and everyone just sort of moaning about it and just calling it not a proper Metal Gear game. Um, just really to try and get a wider understanding of the game and to see whether it was worth me paying £25 out to experience it myself basically. Um, and I did and I have played a fair few hours. Um, I To put it into context for anyone that has played the game or sort of seen gameplay on YouTube or anything like that, I have just rescued the nurse. So I've started building up the base a bit, I've got a fair few different weapons and have been out to a few different uh, locations and obviously had my fair share of time in the dust area. So I would like to think that I've got to grips with a lot of the sort of early, at least early gameplay mechanics and the early ideas that are displayed to the player which to be honest do mainly happen in the first sort of hour it then kind of lets you off the lead and gives you sort of free reign over the the game map really sort of bit by bit feeding you to go a little bit further afield as you go and yes I can see it's not a standard Metal Gear game but then Konami never claimed that it was going to be it was always classed as sort of a side story just a I don't want to say not canon because they have tried to set it still within that same universe obviously you see glimpses of Boss and Miller at the mother base when that is attacked by XOF back in 1975 at the very end of Ground Zero, so it's still very much entrenched in that universe, but that is the only the, the only experience and mention that I have come across so far anyway of any of the main games protagonists and lore and story or anything like that. Now you do meet up very early on with an XOF soldier and there is a few mentionings of both Mother Base and XOF so it is clear that they sort of want you to understand that you are still playing in that game universe but they have also tried to create a completely new cast of characters so obviously the beginning of the game is trying to introduce you to all those new concepts at once and it is a bit mind-boggling at first um, but nothing too Metal Geary to be honest, sitting still for 20 minutes while you're watching cutscenes is pretty standard for that. Um, and then when you start playing, thinking about all the things people are saying about it not being a proper Metal Gear game, well, base building, that was in Peace Walker and Metal Gear Solid 5. You've got the survival elements in terms of your stamina and your health sort of decreasing all the time and your thirst and hunger elements and that is kind of an expanded version of what you encounter during Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. The enemies that you encounter, the wanderers as they're called, um, are infected and led to believe that is due to parasites which again was a concept that was introduced in Metal Gear Solid 5 and was used to explain a few things in previous games like um, The End for example 
Um, and even before then, the earlier games basically replaced the parasites with nano machines, or vice versa, because they're older. So the nano machines came first, and that concept was kind of preceded by the parasites. So it's it's not like these are brand new concepts that have been shoehorned into this game. They're kind of extensions of things that Kojima and Kojima Productions have put into their games previously and the world itself is being portrayed I suppose as an open world but it's very segmented um, the bit at the very beginning you're kind of in this almost like this donut section where it's completely surrounded by either mountainous terrain that you can't go beyond or what is called the dust and at the very beginning of the game you can't venture into there because you don't have any breathing equipment so you are kind of shepherded around a much smaller area to get to grips with the game and then it opens up into that dust area and then you can go beyond that into kind of clearer space beyond that as well which again is very much like how not only Metal Gear Solid 5 was portrayed in terms of it being an open world but kind of section by section which is how the older games were structured I mean Metal Gear Solid 3 although it could be seen as corridor based they are very big expansive wide corridors that are especially the earlier stages within the jungle where you can go from screen to screen and not just follow um, sort of A to B to C to D to get to the end you can go sideways in these and they lead back into um, previous sections that you were in that create other pathways so that in itself is a kind of open idea and obviously as technology has advanced that's what we ended up getting with um, the Phantom Pain and again that's that's been replicated here what's interesting is when people saw the early videos they were set in an area that looked very much like one of the bases of the Phantom Pain. Now I haven't encountered anything yet that is clearly ripped straight from that. Um, not saying that there isn't any and in addition to that I didn't play the beta so I don't know in terms of that whether you were in locations that were basically rip-offs of areas of the Phantom Pain but at the moment that kind of makes me feel like that was an early area that was used for capturing gameplay footage either because they hadn't created too much of the game world itself or because they wanted to keep that hidden so they showed this new gameplay system in an area that the fans knew as familiar with a few sort of tweaks to it now, I might be completely wrong that might be something that I'm going to encounter in a few hours time it might be something that I'm going to encounter in just an hour's gameplay time and in which case then obviously I will happily retract that statement and say that they've kind of taken massive sections away from the Phantom Pain and just pasted them into Metal Gear Survive but I haven't seen that yet so I couldn't comment on that but in terms of early gameplay yes it's not a game that's going to set the world alight the story is fairly convoluted, but is that really anything particularly new to a Metal Gear Solid fan? Not really. Um, my main gripe really is the hunger and thirst gauges. Because they decrease so quickly, it doesn't let you free roam as much as I would like. It kind of keeps you on that lead making sure that you're still hunting for food and water. Now I've looked into this and apparently this does become a lot easier as you go through the game further so that would be quite nice to get to that point. Hopefully that's quite close to my situation at the moment. Um, but other than that it's it's okay. It's only £25. Yes they've taken the ideas from one game already and sort of copied them across into a new game and expanded on it but they're not charging me 45 50 55 pounds for a brand new game so I think it's worth the money that they're charging and I know there's 
DLCs and extra saves and everything like that, but the Phantom Pain you could only have one character anyway. There weren't other save slots. I had to create other accounts on PlayStation Store and everything in order to play through as other characters so that I didn't delete my initial one. So don't really see anyone's argument with that, but there we go. Anyway, these are just my initial thoughts. Once I've played through the game entirely, I will come back with a full review. Please let me know if you've played it, what you think of the game. Um, I would be very, very interested to hear. But until I have completed this and give you a full review, I have been that British guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.